So the reason I wanted to do this video and show the repair of the barometer was because every once in a while I come across a real challenge. The challenge on this one is I couldn't figure out how to take it apart. This is basically what it looks like when it's mount taken out of the wood mounting, the wood frame. It's basically a back and in the front is a crystal and there are no screws, no bolts, no levers to pull or anything else. So I thought, well, maybe it untwists. Well, put some straps on it and that didn't work. The next approach was to cover the glass to protect it with um, tape, cushion it at least a little bit. And then I would pry the rim away from the circular back. So you pry it this way and bring it out a little ways and go around the rim. Uh, being careful not to gouge the pretty brass metal and eventually it just sort of eases its way out and you can take it apart. This is the barometer that's after it's been taken apart all the parts are laid out. In order to film this I needed to somehow figure out how to magnify the image. The works on the inside of the barometer are pretty small and the movement is very m minimal. So I set up a magnifying glass and hopefully I can put the camera on a tripod and look through the magnifying glass and be able to demonstrate all the pieces that are there and how they work. So this is the view through the magnifying glass. The big round thing with the bellows uh, like appearance is the thing that senses the changes in air pressure which is what a barometer is made to measure. It's centered and it's got a pole being suspended above the thing with a spring clip but the pole is the main part it goes up and down depending on the change in the pressure but it only goes up and down a little bit so we have to figure out how to magnify that movement into the movement of the dial here's a lever arm it's a good way of small motion at this end it causes a big motion at this end and then down below there's an anvil and it presses on this rotating uh, pinion which also has a lever arm on it so the lever arm moves back and forth the pole is the lever arm and it's attached to a piece of thread which then goes to a chain and the chain wraps around that axle and as the chain pulls the axle rotates the needle shows the new uh, pressure. I'm pushing it pretty hard so that it moves quite a bit. You don't normally changes in pressure only causes small rotation. And then there's a coil spring uh, in the center that makes sure that it returns back um, and the anvil presses against the uh, initial lever arm. So the question is what needed to be fixed? Well, a lot of the construction on this is pretty fine. This arm was attached to the spring clip, right where that screw is, with a rivet. And after a period of time, the flexing uh, caused the rivet to fail. So I replaced the rivet with a screw. Um, hopefully that'll keep it going for a little bit longer. Um, the screw is solid enough so that when the bellows open and close, um, the lever arm can be pushed against um, the anvil down at the bottom. It's uh, There's a lot of pressure there, at least um, for that little screw to hold, but it should do for a little longer. The manuals always say, you know, assembly is the reverse of the disassembly. Well, we're going to go the opposite way. I'm going to show you how to put it together before I even take it apart. Um, the screws are holding it in. You have to line up in the back, and uh, some of the screws are easier to use than others. I'm going a little bit fast here because um, I have a hard time with very small screws and nuts and bolts, and so. I have to 
fiddle around a little bit to make sure that um, I can get them in the right hole and get them started. You'll see me fumble a couple of times. Um, the uh, mechanism mounts inside the container and then the dial goes on. You have to move it around a little bit so that the uh, pointer will come through it, the indicator will come through. Once the indicator comes through then uh, bend it a little bit. And what I found was that there's nothing, there's no index or anything, no dimple that will hold the dial in a particular direction. So if you spin it sort of in your hand, it sort of rotates freely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot of uh, hot glue to hold it in place. The nice thing about hot glue is that it uh, is fairly soft, it won't hurt anything. Um, I use low temperature stuff so that it's not going to crack the dial, the porcelain dial or anything else. And I'm just going to put a dot of it right where the index should be. You can see sort of a dimple at 6 o'clock where I'm pointing my screwdriver and I'll just put a little piece of hot glue there to hold the dial in place. The little tang that you see on the bottom of the container there uh, is still loose. It's supposed to locate that mechanism inside a decorative wood ring and you don't tighten those screws until the mechanism is inserted into the wood, wood part of it. You'll also notice on the glass there's a pointer and that allows you to set what the last uh, barometric pressure was and so you set it the day before and then you can come back the next day uh, tap the dial usually you have to tap it to free it to move it because there's not much force to get the needle to move the needle will move to the new barometric pressure uh, the black needle will move and then you can use look at the gold needle and see where it was yesterday and base or the previous hour and based on the change, you can tell whether the barometric pressure is going up or down. It's a good indicator of what the weather is going to be like. Falling, air, falling barometric pressure usually indicates bad weather. Rising barometric pressure usually indicates good weather. So now I'm forcing the two halves together, and I'm a little bit anxious about doing that. It was so hard to get them apart. I want to make sure that everything is correct before I put it back together again. Um, I need to force it down inside, make sure that it's not cocked sideways when you do the forcing. Otherwise it'll just bind. Um, and so I'm put it, pushing the two together. The only part that really moves around a lot is the crystal. The glass is held inside the bezel and there's a little bit of clearance there. So this is what the mechanism looks like once it's finally assembled. Um, and now the next thing is to uh, put the put the decorative wood on top um, and there's a question about what the alignment is should the uh, center part of that dial the center part of the mechanism be pointing straight up you can see that it says stormy rain change fair and so there's a hook on that wooden bezel and so should it change the center part of the dial, the 12 o'clock position as it were, should that be pointing straight up or not? Uh, I think in the past it was not in the back plate. You'll see what I mean. The back plate doesn't locate correctly. So I'm pressing it in. Once it's pressed in, I can tighten those three screws that have brackets on the side. That will spread the brackets and hold it up against the, um, the wood ring and keep it in position. You'll also notice right near that screw that I just tightened, I'll point to it in a minute, is an adjustment screw. And that sets the initial position of the black needle. The bar it allows you to adjust the barometric pressure to be something real. I didn't think necessarily it was accurate, so I didn't too worry too much about setting it. It's this screw right here. Um, it actually tilts the table slightly and moves the needle around. Um, and it should be directly opposite that hole in the plate so that you can adjust it later on. 
well, whoever installed the plate didn't quite do it right, and so it's uh, not going to be quite in the right place. You can see me fumbling around a little bit trying to figure out, well, how is it supposed to go? In the end, I just went ahead and put the plate on where it was before. I can adjust the screw, but at this point I'm not too concerned about that. Um, barometers are never really that accurate in the actual pressure reading. I'll speed this up a little bit again because I'm having to hold some very tiny screws and it's fairly difficult uh, to get my hands on them, put them in the right hole, and uh, just attach this back. It really only just protects the mechanism from behind. Right in the middle of attaching the back here, all of a sudden you'll hear a rattle in it. Basically, a cat running up a ladder. Um, we have clear story windows up above, and uh, the cat likes to go up there and look out. I had put the ladder up some time ago to uh, change some batteries in the smoke detectors. And ever since then, the cat likes to go up there, look out, you can see a bunch of crows in the trees out there. Seems to enjoy being up there. Now the back is attached, and uh, you can see that the barometer is completely assembled. Um, disassembly is the reverse of assembly, except for the parts it indicated at the beginning with having to pry the back off. Um, this is the needle that you can set to reference it, and uh, hopefully it will work for many, many more years. <laughs>